Hey there, welcome over here to my kitchen. Today I'm going to be showing you five, yes I said five, new dinner ideas that are perfect for your upcoming week. All of these meals are budget friendly, delicious, and they really are great for this time of year. So I hope you enjoy it and let's go get started. I was pretty sick this past week, so when I started to feel better, I made this classic shortcut chicken noodle soup. This recipe is great. You really got to keep it in your back pocket this fall and winter. So to get it started, I just cut up our veggies, celery, onion, and carrots. Now, part of the shortcut part is I am using a rotisserie chicken for the chicken. This is great because you don't have to cook chicken up on your own, and this chicken is very flavorful. So over to my large pot I added in two tablespoons of butter and a tablespoon of olive oil once the butter was melted and the oil was hot I tossed in those cut up carrots onion and celery I'm going to cook those veggies all together for about five to seven minutes or until they start to get soft now I'm adding in my nine cups of chicken broth and as you see, some of the bouillon stuck to the bottom of my bowl. I didn't mix it well enough, but if you ever wonder what type of bouillon I use, I just use the better than bouillon and I mix it in water for my chicken broth. But for the seasonings for this chicken noodle soup, I used a teaspoon of salt and pepper, a teaspoon of onion powder, teaspoon of dried thyme, half a teaspoon of dried sage, and then a teaspoon of garlic powder. You could always add seasonings or subtract seasonings. Then toss in your chicken from the rotisserie chicken and bring this up to a boil. And once it starts to boil, you will toss in your egg noodles. You could really use any type of egg noodles that you like, but I love these thicker, wide country style egg noodles, or you could use the Amish style egg noodles. They just taste a little bit more homemade to me, and I used about eight ounces of them. I gave this a stir and I let this simmer on my stove for about 18 minutes or until those egg noodles were tender. At this point, my house was smelling so, so good, but seriously, you need to save this chicken noodle soup recipe for this fall or winter when you might be under the weather and you just need an easy chicken noodle soup recipe to make. This tastes so homemade and delicious, but it has so many shortcut steps in it. It's great. Now we're making these classic green chili chicken enchiladas. So for this recipe, you'll need about two and a half cups of cooked shredded chicken. I'm cooking my chicken up in the Instant Pot. I just have about two chicken breasts. Then I added one cup of water right in there. I put the lid on top, set it to sealing, and I cooked this on high pressure for 20 minutes. If you don't wanna cook your chicken in the Instant Pot, you could always boil it over the stove or you could buy a rotisserie chicken, whatever you like but here's my chicken out of the instant pot I shredded it up I added it to this large bowl along with three-fourths cup of sour cream or you could use plain Greek yogurt whatever you prefer and then four ounces of diced green chilies and one cup of shredded sharp cheddar cheese give this a really good stir I'll set this mixture to the side. We're going to start on the green chili enchilada sauce now. So I am going to be using 19 ounces of this can of enchilada sauce. I poured it right into this pan over the stove. And then you're going to bring this sauce up to a boil and you're going to let it boil on your stove, stirring it frequently for about two minutes. Now that we have our enchilada sauce good and hot, it is time to assemble our enchiladas now. So I have a nine by 13 baking dish. I'm spraying it with nonstick spray. And then you are going to grab a corn tortilla, dip it in that hot enchilada sauce. This will help your corn tortillas not crack so much when rolling them. And then put a couple scoops of that chicken mixture into your tor corn tortilla and roll it up. To make everything super easy, I'm just using a cookie scoop in that chicken mixture, it makes it pretty simple. Mm -hmm. 
If you like your enchiladas extra saucy like we do, pour that enchilada sauce over the top and then cover everything with a cup of shredded sharp cheddar cheese. This will bake in a preheated oven to 350 degrees for about 30 to 35 minutes. Here's my plate of food, and oh boy, those enchiladas are definitely a family favorite. They are just fantastic. I serve them alongside of refried beans, Spanish rice, guacamole, sour cream, and diced tomatoes, but serve your enchiladas with whatever you love. Now we're making this chicken with zucchini and parmesan cheese with smashed potatoes on the side. We're going to start on the smashed potatoes first. So in this pot of boiling water, I added about a pound and a half of golden potatoes. Boil these up and let them become fork tender. I have been getting so many requests to make these smashed potatoes, so I'm excited. Over to the pan on my stove, I have two tablespoons of hot olive oil in there. I added my pound and a half of cubed chicken breast and I seasoned it with a dash of salt, pepper, Italian seasoning, onion powder, and garlic powder. I let the chicken cook through at this point. While we have our chicken cooking away, I am going to dice up our one yellow squash and one large zucchini. Now that our chicken is cooked through, I am going to remove it to a plate and I am going to set this plate to the side. In the same pan that we cooked that chicken in, I added in two tablespoons of butter along with a tablespoon of olive oil. Once the butter was melted and the oil was hot, I tossed in that squash and the zucchini. You're also going to be adding in seasonings at this point, I tossed in a dash of Italian seasoning, pepper, salt, and garlic powder, but you could add in any seasonings that you love. Give this a stir, scrape all those flavorful bits off the bottom of your pan, and let the zucchini and squash become soft. Now that my zucchini and squash are to the tenderness that I like them to be, I added back in our cooked chicken along with a third a cup of Parmesan cheese. Give this a stir, let the cheese melt down, and then it's ready to serve. But now we are going to finish up our smashed potatoes. So now that they are fork tender, I just strained the water out of my pot, and then I set the potatoes to the side to cool down for a second. We're going to work on the butter mixture now. In this bowl, I added in three tablespoons of butter. Next, add in two tablespoons of grated Parmesan cheese along with a half a tablespoon of minced garlic and then a dash of pepper and salt. Give this a stir. I have my sheet pan here lined with parchment paper. I dumped those potatoes right on my sheet pan and you are going to smash them now. So I'm using my potato masher and I'm kind of smashing them into smaller pieces. Be careful, you don't want them to like fall into a hundred different pieces. You don't want them to break apart. Just gently smash them. And then with that butter mixture, you are going to drizzle it over the top and then put this in the oven under the broiler for a couple of minutes until the tops get nice and crispy. Here's what dinner looks like. That chicken and the zucchini and squash have amazing flavor. And then these smashed potatoes are so much fun to make and they really are so flavorful and good. I also serve this with a side salad with spring mix, tomatoes, feta cheese, and avocado. Now we're making this Italian manicotti, and I can't believe I've never made manicotti on my channel before. To my pot of boiling water, I'm going to be adding in my six ounces of manicotti pasta. It's just these big, huge little circle things like this, and I cooked them according to the package instructions. While those were cooking away, I started on the cheese mixture. In this bowl, I added in 15 ounces of ricotta cheese. Next, toss in two eggs, followed by one cup of mozzarella cheese, 3 fourths cup of Parmesan cheese, a dash of salt and pepper, and then give this a stir. Mm -hmm. 
Filling manicotti shells could be a little bit difficult sometimes, so here's a not so professional trick that I like doing. So I love filling a big Ziploc bag with that cheese mixture, and then I just zip it up and cut a little hole at the bottom of the bag. This will help you fill up your manicotti shells in no time at all. It is absolutely amazing. I have my 9 by 13 baking dish right here. I am spraying the bottom of it with nonstick spray. And then you are going to pour half of your 24 ounce jar of marinara sauce to the bottom and kind of spread it out. Now it is time to fill up our shells. So grab your manicotti shells, open them up just like this, and then kind of squeeze that cheesy mixture right in the center and then place it to the bottom of your baking dish. Over the top of the manicotti shells, I added the remaining marinara sauce and then I kind of spread it out to the best of my ability. And then I love cheese, so I sprinkled about a third a cup more Parmesan cheese over the top. Then over the Parmesan cheese, I added an additional cup of mozzarella cheese. This baked in a preheated oven to 350 degrees for about 40 minutes. Here's what dinner looks like. If you're a huge cheese fan like me, you will absolutely devour this dinner. And I do want to mention to you, of course, this one is a meatless meal. So if you're looking for a meatless meal, this one's for you. I served it alongside of a side salad with spring mix, tomatoes, avocado, feta cheese, and dried cranberries. This one's a real fun one. We are going to be making these taco quesadillas now. To the pan on my stove, I added one pound of ground beef. Go ahead and break that ground beef up and cook it through right now. Once your ground beef is cooked through, just remove any grease in the pan and add about two tablespoons of taco seasoning and a fourth a cup of water. Give this a stir and let this simmer together for a few minutes. To assemble these taco quesadillas, I have my tortilla right here. You're going to be adding a layer of refried beans to the bottom of the tortilla. Next, on top of the beans, you're going to be adding a couple scoops of that ground beef mixture that we just made up. After the ground beef mixture, add a few little dollops of salsa on top. And then this is kind of the fun part. You're going to be using tortilla chips and place them all around the top of the salsa just like like that and then sprinkle it with cheese and then over the top of the cheese add one tortilla and then you are going to bring this over to the stove. I have a couple tablespoons of melted butter on the stove. I added my quesadilla down. I let it get crispy on one side and then I flipped it over and then I let it get crispy on the other side. Then it was time to serve. These taco quesadillas are such a fun twist on taco night just because they're not your average taco. They're not your average burrito. These are absolutely so delicious. Also, they're a lot of fun to throw together and they're pretty easy to make. I would really love to have you here, so go ahead and subscribe down below the video so you don't miss any more videos in the future and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.